It's a story that has inspired thousands. The champion dirt track driver returning to a sport he loves after two decades away fighting in illness, but more determined than ever to have his youngest son see him drive and win. What's getting you back in now? <sighs> my, other, my older boys are 28 and 27 right now, and I got a four and a half year old. And my son Aaron, who's 27, says, we're out golfing one day, and he says, you know what really sucks? He says, uh, me and Ryan are in all these checkered flag picks, and Caleb will never be in one. And I'm, I'm telling you, it just lit that fire. And I, I had no inkling, I didn't even want to drive. For 19 years, I mean, I like race cars, I like going to races, but I thought, Nothing. Then came the day after a community came together to help him build a car. He would finally take to the track for the first time in his comeback attempt. The track closed all but close friends and family. You can be petters on the track, you can be enemies on the racetrack, but when somebody gets sick, everybody sticks together. wait on a closed track that friends arrange just for Doug. Then a moment they will never forget as father and son celebrate with a fist bump. Wait, wait. Determined to win, to get the rest of it, but after years away, his skills, his car, and his team would be put to the test. The man who won dozens of features in the past would find the road back bumpier than ever. But he had a team, a community of racers, family, friends in his pit. If it's one thing I can't express, the, the warm welcome back I keep saying, it just never stops. I mean, I throughout the years of racing, we've made lots of friends and this and that, and we're making more and more as it goes. It's just never ending, you know. Weeks after, and hours and hours of work by so many, Doug is gearing up for Father's Day. Wouldn't it be the perfect gift for a son who he dedicated his return to and for his own dad with him his entire career? Race day, the rain started coming down. The stands started filling up, but many began to wonder, would they race at all? But soon they would find out the show was on. Oh, it was insane. I mean, it was absolutely uh, overwhelming and in a different way than what I thought it would be. Uh, just seeing the whole thing come together and having the guys out there and the kids and you know the family and all that, it was great. It felt, it felt fantastic to be back in a race car, by the way, but yeah, it was, it was great. So many of his family and friends gathered to watch his comeback, but the rain just keeps coming. Conditions get worse by the hour. A few heats run, fighting through the mud and the rain. Then came Doug. Doug was driving again until his car, smoke billowing out, came to a sudden stop. The tow truck called in to help. We broke a, a J-bar mount. And I'm gonna say we broke a J-bar mount because somebody named Aaron didn't tighten a bolt. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the J-bar slid all the way to the bottom and the rear end moved, moved over in the car and bent a shock and it started vibrating and grinding. And I don't play around with the vibrations too much anymore, so I just pulled it in. Because taking chances with something like that nearly cost him his life years ago and pretty much ended his career. But a lot has changed since then. Life and his health battles have mellowed him, helping him appreciate and enjoy each moment now. You know what's funny is 20 years ago I would have been throwing wrenches and PO'd and everything else, you know, but I haven't been that way at all this year. I, I, we broke several times. We've had, we've had our fair shake on bad turns out there racing as far as things not going well. And that doesn't go that way for me anymore. I enjoy it completely differently than I did 20 years ago. Disappointed, but determined. More and more chances came and went. My goal was to go out and win a race for my little guy, put him in a checkered flag pick. But soon he realized there was so much more. Doug was learning too about his goals, not just for the little guy who hadn't seen him drive, but for his older sons and his dad who came together to make it happen. As the season came to a close, reality set in. He may not get that checkered flag after all, but a different kind of victory lie ahead. A phone call.
And perhaps an unexpected highlight for you on this season uh, when you got the phone call about the Hall of Fame. Right. Yep. I can tell you that's something that I've never even considered or would have even thought. And I would also have told you it didn't mean nothing to me until they called me. That was a pretty big honor. You know, it was really cool too. Uh, just having that many people recognize you and things like that made it pretty special. Well, I know it was emotional for you. Yes, it was. Really hard for me to sit there, believe it or not. <laughs> As he sat there being inducted into the Hall of Fame, hearing about his racing career spanning decades. Welcome, Doug Lunt, to the 2019 Quad City Speedway Hall of Fame. His turn came to speak. Well, I will keep you guys all night, but I'd like to thank my friends, my family, all of you guys, and especially all my sponsors for making this possible. Uh, without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do it. Um, I'd like to thank my dad. And emotions took over. He stopped talking, walking into the stands, giving his award to his dad. I guess, you know, you sit back and you look at it, and we started off racing dirt bikes and everything else, and there was a couple times we went to go racing last year, and he's like, well, I don't want to go that far. Not that he's cranky, but once in a while he gets a little cranky. And I'm like, well, then don't go, you know, and it was, he's never missed a race from day one, so, you know, we thought, you know, that's pretty special. So when that award came, I figured he pretty much earned it as much as me or more. So that's why I walked up and handed it to him. And now his legacy hangs on the wall. But he's not done yet in the car. His sponsors are coming back. Only this time, he is driven not just by his youngest son, but his entire family. racing community. I started off doing this last year for my little guy and I realized that my bigger kids enjoyed it just as much or more because they didn't get to be a part of it the way an adult would, you know. And uh, once you get that bug in there, it's, it's in there pretty good, so. Showing that winning is so much more than just getting that checkered flag. And if you like this story, subscribe, leave a comment, share with a friend. Help us grow and continue sharing more stories of everyday people doing cool stuff. This is The Heart of the Story with Gary Mativier. Check out the company supporting racing with links in our show notes right now.